Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about store sales and store sales for Magic haven't grown. It has been very difficult owning a store and not for the reasons that people on YouTube tell you. Um, those are obvious reasons, but your margins have decreased drastically and competition online is people buy a lot more cards online now than they did during Battle for Zendikar. Now, Battle for Zendikar was the best-selling set of all time. That's interesting. But many of these sets after Battle for Zendikar, and including the whole Ravnica set, uh, Return to Ravnica, Return to Return to Ravnica, did not do very well in terms of sales. And your local game store, your distributor, they have a lot of this inventory, and that's why they put it in the mystery boxes. If you wonder why are we still getting Battle for Zendikar in the mystery boxes, there's just too much of it. Um, a lot of these sets have not retained value well, and that is very disturbing to me. Um, of course, you do have Afa Revolt, you do have the masterpieces, and people will say the masterpieces are what's really putting pushing down these sets because people are trying to get that lottery card but I would say I haven't seen anything like Amarket where the set is just completely trashed in terms of value in terms of value and more and more distributors because if you're a local game store you go to a local game store you're going to have old packs you are going to be strapped with pre-release kits that you didn't sell you're going to be strapped with fat with bundles, they call it bundles now, PR reasons. You're going to be strapped with boxes. The reality of it is sales for me is down by 30%. And none of these new sets are going to be very good. Battle for Zendikar was the peak of sales. Where you could get a box and you could easily sell it to your customer and they wouldn't really complain. Now, it's tough. Um, at least in the U.S., it is a lot tougher to sell a box now than it was during Battle for Zendikar. And here are these sets that, you know, we're going to go down. We got Core Set. Core Set was not very good in terms of sales for me. Modern Horizons, it's still very... That's a weird set. Uh, War of the Spark was supposed to be a, a great selling set with Planeswalkers. It did not sell well. The Ravnica Allegiance, I mean, we went back to Ravnica and we had Ravnica Allegiance. We had, that should have been a good set with the Shocklands, but now they are reprinting all the Shocklands in the Brawl deck. So that set is not going to retain its value like it normally would. None of these sets are going to retain value. Therefore, after rotation, if you are a store or you're somebody sitting on booster boxes or even booster cases of this stuff it's not good because you cannot sell it like it's immovable some sets like masters 25 it was immovable when i first got it now people want it so ultimate masters that was a very good set but most stores didn't get very a lot of that uh, if you look at the Guild of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, those two should have outdone Battle for Zendikar. There is no reason they should not have. Battle for Zendikar didn't even have fetch lands in it. I mean, let's just be honest here. Did literally did not have fetch lands. And Battle for Zendikar was all the way back to Core Origin. So the last set before Battle, the set before Battle for Zendikar was Origins. The supposedly last core set in Magic's history. So it's been a long time. Yeah, from a store owner's perspective, uh, selling boxes and blisters and boosters and whatever, like sealed product, sales are down. Uh, sales are way, way down for Magic, and I don't think they're ever going to really pick up to the battle for Zendikar. Part of that might be MTG Arena. Uh, our best-selling product is the Planeswalker decks, and they are very intro level, and you get a code. I think they, they are the only product that gives you a code, I believe. I am very, very happy um, that I'm divesting. I've talked to my distributor. I'm not going to buy any more of this stuff. I'm just going to stop buying it. Um, I'd 
you know, it, it comes to a point where you look at the math and then you can see the trend. So it's not so bad right now, but it's trending down. Sales is definitely trending down and sales on other product is trending up. Um, now, when you buy singles to resell, I think that's a lot better because you're buying these singles at, let's say, 60 or 70% of retail. So you do have a cushion here. Your cushion on Magic products is very, very little. So you buy a box for 81, 82, you try to sell it for 90 shipped, shipping cost six. So you're making 80, you're making a dollar or two for an 82 dollar, 80 plus dollar investment. That's very bad. That's like a 5% markup. Now you might ask, oh, well, you don't need to sell your box for nine. You're kind of in a bad situation. It used to be if you didn't want to sell your box for 90, you could hold on to it, hope that it's Innistrad, Conta Tark here. And one day the box is now 110 and now you can sell it for 100 and you get that extra cushion. I don't feel that good about Amaket. I don't feel good about our devastation. A lot of these recent sets... I don't, Explorers of Ixlan, Rivals of Ixlan, even Dominaria, which had a lot of hype around it. I don't want to be holding boxes of that and hoping that it goes up like 10% so I can break even. And that's the problem most stores will have is they will be sitting on old inventory. And in the past, if you sat on Lorwyn, and Innistrad, Averson Restored, your boxes would, New Phyrexia is a good example your boxes would just go up in price. Original Ravnica. Today, there's just so much of it. Like Battle for Zendikar, I, I sold some bundles for like $25, I think, $30 or something like that. And it was like, I just want to get rid of this. It was a terrible deal. I missed it in my math. But I think I sold Oath of the Gatewatch for $30. I bought that for 40 so I took, a, I took a loss just because I wanted to get rid of the inventory. I just didn't want it anymore. Uh, Magic Origins, the same thing with the bundles. There's just not... There is a higher potential of losing money right now than making money. And that's not where I want to be in this product. Especially, you know, I'll still buy singles and collections. I like that type of stuff because singles do go up in value. I just don't see you holding like 10 cases of Amarquette and 10 years from now being, yep, Amarquette is valuable. They've reprint everything now. Like literally everything is reprinted. I was uh, looking at Open Air Core 2020 pack and I was like, oh, when, I don't remember this card. And it's because the card was, <laughs> the card was printed, reprinted the previous set. I mean, that's ridiculous, but it's what's happening. So you look at all these sets, and especially Amaket is really bad. Our is really bad. Ixlon is really bad. I, I mean, these are not sets that people would want in the future. These are things that if you go to a local game store, the local game store is going to try to sell it to you at discount, which means they lose money. So imagine like opening a business and losing money every time you sell something. Yeah, that's what my business has become. So it's been fun. I had a fun time. Uh, a lot of you know that it was fun, uh, but I'm going to let my other friend kind of take care of it. He's going to open a store and then we'll rotate eventually in the next five years. I'll get a quote store back again. Man, these sets have just been brutal. Even Eldritch Moon. Kaladas was somewhat okay. A for Revolt was very good. I do like A for Revolt because it has Fatal Push. You know, I'm a big fan of having consistent expected value in the uncommon slot. But Eldritch Moon, uh, just ick. Uh, so many sets that you look at this list of sets on the left, and you have to come to the conclusion that I didn't make any money. <laughs> like, you know, no one made any money because you're just sitting on these boxes. In the past, these boxes could increase in price. Today, they actually continue to decrease in price, which is real bad. I don't know. Like, it, it's our sales are down about 32.7% um, from Battle for Zendikar on. 
And even though I didn't have a retail, I only had a retail location for less than a year, but I still had the online. I still had my own inventory that I was managing. And I basically had to fire sell a lot of over the gate lots and battle for Zendikar because I didn't want it anymore. You know, that was supposed to be like your treasure chest, right? I mean, like original Zendikar was very, very good. Now it did have fetch lands, not as the expeditions and the actual rare slot, which is a big, big expected value difference. But overall, I mean, you just gotta fire sell it. You gotta fire sell it. There are, there were some good sets but by far, there were many, many bad sets. Like Oath of the Gate Watts is a bad set. Shadows over Innistrad is a bad set. It just didn't ever go up in price. Um, and it's old enough, right? Like These sets are old enough that they should be ticking up in price if you look at the magic historically. So I'm not surprised at all that Battle for Zendikar was the best-selling set, which means that since Battle for Zendikar... Oath of the Gate Watch all the way up to the current set that we're in, Core 2020, no set has done better, which means we're not growing in terms of sales. Now, of course, you could say MTG Arena. There are other indicators that may take away from physical Magic sales, but at the end of the day, Magic the Gathering, I'll just point blank say it, is a card game. It's a physical card game. MTG Arena is for a different audience for the most part, and from people who would buy cards. So, yeah, um, I don't think any store is doing very well at this moment in time selling Magic cards. I don't think it is, because you sit on dead inventory. That's just Magic the Gathering. But your dead inventory is really, really dead right now. Hi, guys.